All right, let's add Ultra HDMI to another N64. This is my last good Ultra HDMI flex from the sheet that I used during the live stream, and you can see I've already tinned the little wings that go to read your controller. Oh, and by the way, here's the bad one that's on the sheet. Right. Here we go. But yeah, the little wings are for reading your controller and getting five volts and three volts. So now, yeah, you can see I've already flexed on the graphics chip here, the RCP of the N64. That was from a false start for this video. I'm trying to line it up with pin six. You can see a little dot there that's for pin five. And you could also see thicker traces down there that are for like the shared ground that runs on the under underside of the flex. And I don't know why I just like to aim for those when I'm tacking it down. Maybe they hold a bit more solder. But it just helps me distribute it. And then I can come back. Oh yeah, this is a Hakko S7 tip instead of the typical K style blade tip. And I like it because it's got a tiny little bevel that helps me distribute between two pins perfectly. Where I could just melt two pins. And it goes between both. Of course you have to add flux to make sure you don't bridge it. And the lighting here is terrible. It actually looks decent in person, but on the tablet here, it's terrible. Now this might have something to do with it. Get some more light over here. And add more flux so I can distribute it better. A little more solder. Oh, by the way, this is a 835P flux pin from MG Chemicals. It's the one that Marshall H from Retroactive, the creator of the Ultra HDMI kit, he recommends you use it. He says not to use no clean flux because we're not using hot air and so it doesn't get activated. And a lot of them, even though they're no clean, they're still corrosive until they're activated. And I've taken, I've used hot air to take the RCP off before and just found flux everywhere underneath it. So there's unactivated flux under there it could just be corroding away. So I'm just going to clean off the flux here. Well, it still looks terrible until I tilt it and get light in there. I'm going to raise the temperature to about 380 before I do these caps, which is where we draw power from. And yeah, I was at about 330 before. Celsius, of course. And, uh, flux both caps. And the one with three vias in front of it is the easier one. But this one here. Yeah, it goes straight into a power plane that sucks heat away. And that's the real reason to raise the temp of the iron. Uh, this is going to be a problem. I usually start on the opposite side of the board, but since I needed to have the microscope set up this time, I started at the top, and it's causing all sorts of other little problems I wasn't anticipating, like having to switch back and forth on the temperatures. Even that's slowing me down. Of course, everything went smooth on the live stream and did it the right order, but no one could see anything. So let's get controller input from this via here. Some revisions, you get it from the larger chip on pin 16, but I'm going to use this pretend wire here and uh, just get a little bit of flux on it and shove it down the hole. Alternatively, you could go to the center pin of controller port number one, but that would just make a mess of things, especially because the Ultra HDMI Flex is already on the top. And uh, of course, you gotta be really careful not to burn the reset button here. There's, it's hard to get any access to it with your iron. Ah, it was too late. Gee. I should have just left it recording a video. I don't think it would go to sleep then. And I would also have direct feed footage to overlay. Yeah, just trying to add a little heat from the bottom too. 
to make sure it flowed. Fold it over the top of the PIF chip and then cut it off. Just need a tiny little bit. Oops, wasn't under the microscope. This thing keeps trying to go to sleep on me. Anyway, I don't like the tail that I'm seeing on this. So, add more flux, get some more heat on it. There we go. Clean it up again, and yeah, much nicer. And since we're already cleaning on the top side, let's go ahead and get the cartridge slot. But yeah, you could just pop it right off and you usually find a ton of flux left over from manufacturing that holds all the dust, dirt, and lint that falls through the cartridge connector. And sometimes it's just forming like mounds of it down there. And you don't want to flood it because you don't want to liquefy flux and have it get down the holes and mess with the connection. I get a little more solder down here. Just keeps wanting to wick off. This flux crust is pretty stubborn. I'm getting ready to do the LED by increasing the temperature of the iron to 380 again. There, I got the fingernail did it. And I'm not going to use the desoldering gun that takes forever to warm up and requires cleaning and maintenance. You just slip this right between, pops right out. The desolder braid ends up being a lot faster with, you know, a few considerations. Like the uh, ground plane is going to suck a lot of heat out. And you want to make sure to use a cut piece of braid so it's not sinking heat into the braid. And, like, I'm going to get away with using this little used piece that was already cut here. But, you know, if you have any trouble, I'll then use a fresh piece. But maybe I'm playing with fire here, but <laughs> I better, I definitely have to flux it since it's used. And I will put heat on the ground plane first so I can get it all soaked full of heat and then add my flexed braid so that I don't have to wait for the heat to conduct through and burn off all my flux in the process. Did it. With used braid. Let's get rid of this nasty flux. Man, really nasty. I use SIP headers, single inline pin headers, which uh, sometimes the LEDs fit kind of loosely into it, but I have a way to deal with that. I'm going to hold it by the LED so that I don't burn my fingers and don't have it falling out while I solder it. Yeah, so it really has to be a new LED or else the heat would melt the solder that's on the LED legs and it would get stuck inside the socket and then there was no point to the socket. And yeah, by the way, I use the sockets because people change their minds all the time or they want to see multiple colors or um, I'll send them multiple colors and let them choose and um, it just ends up being easier. And let's do the end game reset. which I go straight to the reset button. I don't go to the PIF chip. And 
The reason why is because I add a KK header on the Ultra HDMI board itself, which has a, um, a ZIF connector for the, the Flex, and um, I want to maintain that disconnectability, I guess. So I use these uh, pre-made KK pins, which, you know, might seem kind of lazy, but I have a reason. But yeah, it also saves some time. There we go. Clean it off. And now, um, depending on how the leads are bent on the LED, sometimes it's a little too loose. So I like to go ahead and tin it, which remember I was talking about, you don't want to have this tinned before you solder the socket, unless you're holding the socket with something else, because otherwise it'll get stuck in there. I use the lid, I have some remnants of flux on that, so. There we go. Just adds a little bit of thickness, so it fits a little tighter. And there we go. It was fitting tight enough before, but it's a little bit tighter. And it looks like when I was heating the um, pad underneath from the VIA, where we have our controller input reading signal coming from, I heated it up enough that the Ultra HDMI Flex detached on the top side. So that's another reason why I usually work from the bottom side first. And I'll tin my pre-tinned wire a little more. Just add solder to it. Uh, you know what? I keep forgetting to do this under the microscope. <sighs> Tablet trying to sleep on me. Turning the uh, temperature down to 300 since it's not going to need 330 for such a small trace. Ah, my tip is gross. I need to add more flux anyway. Clean my tip. I did not add enough solder to my tip, so I ended up wicking away a little more than I wanted to here, but it still seems like a solid connection, so I'm going to leave it. just looks bad on the microscope, everything I do, but I, I think it's just the lighting. Let me see if I can show you guys. Where is it? Come on. There we go. And we're done with the soldering, at least.